Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. On today's episode, we have a talented actress, singer, writer, director, and YouTube interview series host, the one and only Judy Norton. Playing everyone's beloved big sister, Mary Ellen, Judy, along with her castmates, won the hearts of millions of viewers in the 70s series, The Waltons. After learning more about Judy's diverse talents and daredevil-like experiences, I'm left to wonder just what hasn't she done? Enjoy! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the multi-talented Judy Norton. Hello, Judy. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fine. Staying dry. Good. <laughs> That's a challenge. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm not going to want to hear that word drought anymore after this season. <laughs> yeah. I think California is finally in some good shape. Yeah. Always a mixed bag. <laughs> well, it's true. You know, it's like, well, we'll give you a few billion dollars in damage, but you'll have water at least. What do you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. And again, I'm not used to it. We're not used to it because it's been a good decade where it's just been like, okay, is it ever going to rain here again? Yes. But uh, we're lucky. We're lucky. Got to count your blessings. Yeah. Speaking of blessings, now how's that for a segue? That's a good one. <laughs> Actor, producer, director, writer, singer, wing walker, trapeze artist. <laughs> Next question. When When's the Everest... Expedition. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Too much snow right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just look at your life's work and am astonished at just how much you do, how much you accomplish, not to mention playing everybody's favorite big sister, at least mine. Well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you were my favorite character because you reminded me of my sister, but I always thought you were just the most entertaining. You had the you had the most colorful character. Uh, well, it was a character that was a lot of fun to play, especially in the early years when, when Mary Ellen was such a tomboy and a rebel and yeah. <laughs> right. Was was not going to follow any pre predetermined path for women were supposed to follow at that point in time. So it uh I had I had a lot of fun playing the character and probably it was one of the more um, more delineated characters right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the homecoming, uh, some of the others, they hadn't, you know, they weren't as, as featured in terms of what direction they would ultimately go, how those characters would sort right. of uh, shape up. So I was, I was fortunate in that sense that I had a lot to grab onto right from the beginning. And so they, they were able to just roll that right into the series when we when we kind of went from TV movie to series. Uh, so right away, uh, I knew who my character was. <laughs> right. Well, and boy, you guys sure got to establish those characters. You have a good decade run. I mean, that's that's uh, that's one for the books. You can be really proud of. You know your your legacy. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but you know, I, I, I certainly am. I mean, it's it's astonishing to us that here we are 50, 50 years later and that the show is still so popular and you know it, you, that's that's nothing that anyone can ever predict that if, if someone knew how to predict that you know they, they could sell it yeah uh, <laughs> yeah i'd go to the races with them for sure absolutely <laughs> but it does it does uh What's interesting about it is because of the era that the show was on, uh, it was, you know, it was definitely a different era in television and the whole way we filmed and the fact that shows, uh, it was, it was the old format, you know, uh, September was the beginning of the fall season, the new season, the year you launch all the new shows in September. And then there would be, somewhere well you know we did in the neighborhood of 24 25 episodes in a season so you shot those it took us nearly nine months to shoot and those would run from september till nearly till sometime in the spring and then the summer was reruns 
and right. then that was it. And then you'd go back and it was the next season. Well, now, I mean, there were no, when the show started, I mean, there wasn't such a thing as any kind of really recorders. And I remember the first, so the video recorders were big machines. And I mean, it was probably five, six years into the series before I had any kind of piece of equipment that allowed me to record the episode. So it's sort of like if I wasn't home on a Thursday night, I didn't get to watch it. Mm. I didn't see the episode. And then maybe I caught it in, on its one rerun. But now we're in a position where people can, you know, can record them and keep them. There's, you know, there's there's video copying you can get. So people are able to watch these episodes over and over and over. So now um, I get questioned all the time about things that are inconsistent or timelines that don't make sense or because people can watch them over and over and you can stop and you can look at something and you can say wait a minute wait a minute something's not right here let me pause let me back up and you know, so it's it's fascinating to go back and and do that now um where they can put the whole arc of the show together and and know it so well. I mean, I I would say the viewers know the show better than I do because there's still episodes that I've maybe seen once, if I've seen them at all. I'm just kind of making my way through all of them again as I've been doing um, a YouTube channel about you know, behind the scenes of the Waltons. Yes. And so I'm going back and I'm watching them and it's like, oh, I don't remember that episode at all. <laughs> you know, I don't remember. <laughs> it's, right. it's the weirdest thing. You know, even things seem I was in. <laughs> oh, right. I am loving that series, by the way, I've been watching. Um, it's behind the scenes, folks. And Judy does a masterful job hosting it. Uh, I really like the last two episodes with Richard Thomas. That was... Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you guys just don't skip a beat. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, blooper reels. Hmm... Maybe I should look some of those up. <laughs> I, I guess there's a few clips on YouTube. Um, some uh, somehow I don't even know how you'd how you'd find them, but they were they were on film because that was the format at that point in time. So the someone would edit together stuff and they'd show it at our Christmas parties, and then that would be it. We wouldn't see them again, and none of us were ever given copies. I mean, what would I do with a you know, piece of 35 millimeter film, right. you know, um, and they didn't convert. I, I imagine at some point they were converted, but I think it was pretty much they sat in the producer's archives or something. So I have no idea where they ended up. I had thought Richard had them at some point, but in, in talking with him, it didn't sound like like he had them either. And, you know, they were sort of, I think a lot of it was you had to be there. They were inside, a lot of them were inside jokes, things that... If you saw them, you, you might not even get. And I think if we look back at them now, we might not think they were as funny as we thought they were at the time. And, you know, uh, some things I think are better left uh, to the imagination. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trust me, they're pretty funny. But again, it's like you said, with these with these reels, they're usually like fourth, fifth, sixth generation. So the quality is is very very seldom the quality is any good um yeah save for the ones that you guys saw at your christmas party but um you know again it's it's still fun to watch because it's so out of character i mean the yeah. wholesome waltons and it's like when you guys described it as a, a fun way a fun oh how did you say it a fun element of chaos <laughs> <Or something>. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's what i'm seeing and obviously Richard was just the prankster or the jokester or I mean he was he was the comedic <laughs> element in a lot of these. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean Richard, I mean that's something that you when people say how were we similar or different from our characters? I mean definitely with Richard uh you didn't get anywhere near this his sense of humor through the character of John Boy. I mean, although there was a, there was quite a bit of humor in the show, so there were definitely times where where you saw that, but Richard himself is, you know, he has a wonderful sense of humor and, and you know, he never takes himself too seriously. I mean, he takes his work very seriously, but he doesn't take himself too seriously. And, um, you know, he's, he's far more 
sophisticated and and erudite and um, well traveled and and well read and and things that uh, you might expect John Boy to have evolved into as his life went on because of going to New York and then going to Hollywood and you know as Earl Hamill did so uh, but you know as a young boy in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia those are not necessarily characteristics that you would attribute to John Boy at that at that point or even even Richard and yet Richard already had a lot of that because of you know the the world in which he grew up with uh, parents who ran a ballet company and and in touring and living in New York and so and and starting as a performer at a very early age so uh you know we those of us who started very young you you grow up fast in a lot of ways yes well unfortunately in a lot of ways too fast and as so many documented <laughs> cases of that era you know you yeah, I know you started age seven, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, I, of course you were there. I I call it the, the turmoil time, the perilous time. You know, when so many young actors get you know got swooped up into the drug culture and all the you know all the pitfalls that are Hollywood or or along with celebrity and. Um, you know, it didn't seem like that was an issue so much for you guys. I, uh, I mean, you didn't see a lot of tabloids, which is great. <laughs> and yet, yeah. what, you know, of course, I got to tell you, I, I interviewed Michael um, last year, and she was just amazing. Holy smokes! Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, she's very open about you know her struggles and all of that. And it's like, I guess, in some ways, even you know, as long as you survive to tell the tale, it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly things each of us went through, but uh, the the thing is, we went through them, you right. know, um, and it, you know, we always had each other, and that that stability, I think, that foundation made a big difference. Yeah, uh, and and I think it also what was easier about that time period was that we did not have all the social media. Yes, we had the tabloids, but we didn't have cell phones where everybody's shooting, you know, taking video of every moment of someone's life and where, yes, we were never stalked by, you know, the media. We just, it wasn't that kind of show right. um, that created that kind of media frenzy. So we could pretty much go on about our lives, you know, yes, if we did some sort of a publicity event where it was you know, known that we were going to be there, we might generate a really good crowd and sign a lot of autographs. But, you know, I could always just go to the grocery store, <laughs> right? you know, or go, go about my life. And that, that was good. And, you know, I think, I think most of us did stupid things when we were young, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things that, <laughs> what? Not things me. that we would prefer not to have, you know, not to have splashed across uh, social media. So, in our youth and 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 you know inexperience and you know silliness and you know I'm just I'm grateful that social me that I, my life was not played out in social media, right? Um, because I think those are not they're snippets and they're out of context and they they are not wholly reflective of a person. Even you know even today what you because it's always the Unusual and, yeah. and the extraordinary that gets splashed all over the place, and that's yes. like an instant in a person's life, and you, you do not know the context. And no. you know the old cliche about you know walking a mile in someone's shoes is so is so true that you don't you have no idea what was going on in a person's life at the moment that something happened, and and even if it's I mean yes, there are certain things that there's no excuse for absolutely, but. Uh, you know, people make mistakes and they, you know, they say things that they don't mean, you know, in receipt of a moment and, and regret later. And I just feel like it's gotten, I think it's out of hand. I yes. think that um, the old, what, how much does 
the public have a right to know about individuals. Yes, as as public person, as as you know, we have chosen to put ourselves in the public eye by pursuing a career that is public like that. But does that mean that twenty four seven of our life should be accessible to the public? You know, it, where where is that line where we're allowed to? just be a person and have a family and have a life and have some some moments where we don't have to be on display or careful about everything we do and how it's being interpreted and stuff. And I just think everybody needs those moments to close the door and let your hair down and, you know, take a breath. So I think it's it's really, really challenging for people, anyone who's in the public eye today, uh, to you know, to live a life that would not, under public scrutiny, you know, <laughs> be misinterpreted. Sure. <laughs> no, it's true. You're basically echoing. I had an interview with Christopher Knight just a couple of weeks back, yes. and he said the same thing. You know, uh, sure, it was perilous then, but I think it's a little bit more so now. Um, yeah. I actually saw a, a group of paparazzi, a clip of them, and I don't remember who they were shooting, but instead of just smile or, hey, look over here, it was, give us some click bait. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> okay. That's an yeah. interesting approach, but that's what it is. It's all about you know sensationalism, and I really couldn't go there. I mean, I pay tribute yeah. to the classic stars such as yourself, the television shows, because that's, to me, just as fascinating as anything you could make up about who who died or here's what they look like now or, you know, all that just, it just makes me sick. Yeah. Well, I mean, particularly what what bothers me is is the untruth. You know, the like, because I, I have a YouTube channel, you know, I'm on YouTube yes. every day. And when I click on to, you know, when I just go to basic YouTube, you know, it offers up, you know, a page of videos and, and there will be these videos that it's, that'll show, you know, like one was showing Richard Thomas. It's like, what are those? Oh, see them now. And it's got a, sh a shot of Richard, like on crutches, missing <laughs> half a leg, you know? And I'm like, I know that is a false picture and I have no <laughs> idea where it's from. I don't know if it's from a film he did or if it's something completely manufactured. But it's, you know, yes, it's designed to get somebody to go, oh my goodness, and click on it and watch a video. And what the video is, I have no idea because I refuse to click on it and, you know, give any further attention to something that is clearly a lie and is designed to, you know, shock and draw somebody in. There were, there were you know, I had a few people post things like, oh, I'm so, I heard Richard died. I'm <laughs> like, what? Yeah. You know, it's like a complete falsehood. And... You know, to, to try and suck people into videos that are, you know, and, I, I, and I've come across inadvertently stuff about the end of my board, you know, they'll post something, it's like, where the thumbnail isn't even me. Right. And yet it has my name on. I'm like, that's not a picture of me. I know. <laughs> I know it's not me. And they're, you know, and yet it's being supposedly, um, so those types of things, and yet to gratify them in any way. Um, to substantiate them by clicking on them, it's like I won't do it. You know, it's like why would I, yeah, why would I help that person get more views and that then that video become more popular? Right, they've already got a half a million. What what else do they want? You know, that's the sad thing. You look at the views at some of these, and it's like, dear God, it works. <laughs> yeah, and that people are looking to exploit and make money off of, you know those types of things that's that's where i you know i have to just i have to just not not put attention on it and leave it alone because otherwise it you know it, it just it, it's not i don't want my energy to go into it nor do i want to allow it to even make me angry which it does you know it's sort of all right, then they win, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, right. and you, you sort of live your life like that when you're in the public eye, balancing that, you know, that uh, the positive and the negative, you know, do you read your reviews? Do you, 
read articles? Do you, you know, do you, for me, even like reading my YouTube comments, because I do like to interact with people and I do like to acknowledge them for watching the show and, and, and how wonderful our viewers have been over the years. But, you know, there's some, you know, there's people who post nasty comments and whether they know I'm going to read them or not, I have no idea. But, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, I think that we live in a very difficult world right now, which is why I think a lot of people love the Waltons, because the stories are so timeless, and, and it was about a family struggling in a difficult time and finding a way through with um, joy and with integrity and all of that, and I love what it stands for. Um, and I think that it sets a good example of how one should go through life, how one should treat their fellow man with compassion and acceptance and um, and giving people the benefit of the doubt, giving them a second chance and just being just kind. Yeah. And that's the main thing I'd like to see is that we just are kinder to people, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think that would change the world yeah. if everybody treated others with kindness and compassion and tolerance, you know, that, well, yeah. I fully agree. So something that I've discovered about you that I found just, uh, not just a pleasant surprise, but I, I'm amazed, and that is your singing voice. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You've got, as we say, pipes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And I, I, I just had no idea. And of course, you know, now that I'm much more educated on the wonderful works of Judy Norton, who does so much great stuff that none of that tabloid crap is going to ever touch her. But the point is, <laughs> I mean, I, I listen to some of your stuff and it's just like, wow, wow, that's really almost operatic. Is that, I mean, did you actually study a certain style, because again, I hear an opera singer in there, but I also hear a very soulful singer. Thank you. Um, during, I, I always wanted to sing. I always enjoyed it. My first uh, play as a as a child, children's theater, was a musical, and um, so always loved music. My mom sang professionally when I was growing up. Um, when I was about 16, I discovered that my pitch was terrible. <laughs> it was it was a horrible deflating moment, you know, but I couldn't hear it. You know, I, I recorded myself, you know, just around the house and I thought I'd be oh so brilliant. And I played it back and I was horrified. I was so <laughs> devastated. Like, I'm terrible. This is horrible. What am I going to do? I was, So I was not a natural, you know, talent like we see on so many of these competition shows. Um, and... So I started studying. I was 16. I started studying and it was years and years of just, you know, studying and voice lessons and stuff. But I really wanted to do musical theater. So that was, you know, sort of my focus when I, when I was studying and then I had an opportunity, uh, just after the Waltons ended to do my first, uh, you know, professional musical with Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. Um, and that sort of, that that sort of really uh, inspired and encouraged me because I was doing it for me initially. And it was like I just want I wanted to be able to sing, and I didn't think anybody would ever hire me and pay me to do it because I just didn't think I'd ever be good enough. So to get hired to do a professional show and get my union equity card, and was just like oh my goodness. So then I really doubled down and started you know studying even harder. Um, so I am really the product of years and years and years and thousands and thousands of hours of practicing and, you know, rehearsing and stuff, um, because that's really kind of what I wanted to do. And then I moved. And so I got a chance to do various different musicals. And then I had some opportunity through a wonderful producer I did a lot of work with in Texas um, to start doing just some, some concerts. Um, and... Uh, so, yeah, so that it's been a joy to have that as a, a part of my life. And then, you know, recorded a couple of, of um, CDs. One was a live concert uh, that was that was then, um, you know, mixed and mastered into a, a, a CD. 
And then just most recently, last Christmas, I released a Christmas CD because I always, always wanted to do a Christmas CD. So during COVID, I went, well, there's so many things I can't do, but yeah. I can do this. So that was one of my COVID projects and and just released that last Christmas. So if people are interested, uh, they can get that through my website. It's a hard copy that I personally sign um, to whoever um, you would like it signed to or not. Or it's digitally available on all platforms. So, awesome. Well, that's Judy. Yeah. That's JudyNorton.com, folks, and I will yes. leave the link in the description. Wonderful. Uh, so Thank that you. You can check all that stuff out. But I mean, hands down, with every celebrity I've talked to, I don't even know why I ask this question. I mean, it's almost like, well, it's become a habit. Um, <laughs> and that is, so you're saying musical theater. The stage is by far your favorite way of performing. Um, you know, I yes and no. I mean, I, I'm kind of like Richard and I talked about that. It's, yes, theater's really his first love. Um, I I kind of I tend to love whatever I'm doing at the time. Uh, and you know, same thing if I'm directing. You know, I I don't. I thought when I started directing that I'd be like, oh, but because I started directing theater for, oh, I've, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to be, oh, I want to be on stage. And yet I, I didn't find that was the case. I got just as much you know, uh, enjoyment out of sitting and watching something that I had crafted. Um, so I, I really, I love it. I love elements of, of all of it. Uh, I do, as, as Richard and I talked about, I love the, um, the energy of live theater. I love the, um, the the fact that it's really the actor's medium because once the curtain goes up, nobody can edit you. <laughs> right. Nobody can. You don't end up on the on the cutting room floor, uh, and it's really up to the actors to build that show and from beginning to end. So you have that continuity all the way through. Uh, but I do find that doing the same thing exactly the same thing for too long over and over uh yeah you know, it can be it can be a challenge and it can there can be nights where as much as you go in and you try to make it new every time some nights you just go eh, you know that wasn't a brilliant show tonight there was nothing there nothing felt special or different or new about it you just do your the best you can each night um so i do i do love it and i love the bonding of the cast together um, some shows are more fun. Some shows are easier. Um, probably if I were going to do something for a long time, I'd prefer it to be a musical because some, there's something about the energy of just the music within a show that, to me, helps the energy as a performer as well. Uh, but I love with, with film and television that you can be so uh, precise and that you can, that it it's really... The performance can live just behind the eyes. Um, that if you don't have to think about a performance that the people in the second balcony can relate to. Right. Uh, so you can keep things really just within the actors of the scene. And you can, if something really, you know, falls apart, that you can do another take. And uh, there, yes, there's different sorts of challenges. Uh, but you know, I, I enjoyed that, that, you know, they can craft it, but then there's the downside that that's really the director's meeting because they, and they are going to sit in the editing room and decide what, what makes it to the final cut. And sometimes, you know, your best work in your opinion, isn't even, doesn't even make it to the cut for whatever reason, you know, oh, we're a little long. So that scene wasn't critical. So we're cutting it, you know? So oh, there's all kinds of things like that that will end up happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and television and film are far more tedious to film because there's so much sitting around and waiting. Right. Um, but, you know, it's, we had such a great experience during the Waltons that I think everything that becomes the bar by which any other work I do is certainly measured. And, and there's been, and it's so different when you are on a show that's kind of your show, you know, where you, you have created a family for real, the crew, the cast, the whole, the whole team. 
And that's very special. And I remember when after the show, you know, when I started going on to other sets and things, how different it was because it wasn't, I was going to somebody else's house. They weren't coming to my house, you know? Right. And you find out that, you know, when you are in the show, it, the things and everything is kind of about your family. You know, it was about us. And then I'd go and I'd guest on some other show and I'd do a scene and it'd be like, oh, the whole scene, the whole end, it would be on the star of the show because I was there to serve a function. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, right, wake up call. This this show isn't about me. <laughs> you know? Hey, didn't they get my memo? It's supposed to be. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know, and I think predominantly after do it because it's like, hey, it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you know, that's just unbridled enthusiasm for show business, <laughs> folks. That's what that is. Oh, I mean we we eat. I think you have to have a, a healthy degree of ham <laughs> in you <laughs> to go into this field. You have to be willing to have people looking at you and watching you in in any circumstances, whether they are comfortable or uncomfortable, you know, embarrassing or or wonderful, you know. <laughs> right. Of course. And and when when you do that, because I'd I'd had some time on the stage and a little on the screen. And the idea, of course, is just go. Go for it. Don't think, you know, or think, but don't think. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, that first three takes were so much better than my fourth one. And that's the one they're going to keep? Great. <laughs> but, you know, again, that's that's show business. And you got to love it. And just the, the process. Um, the one thing I wasn't very impressed with was what your guys' dressing rooms look like, though. I, I, <laughs> I have to say, I saw the photograph, and I'm like, those are just little bitty campers. Yeah, yeah, and they were and they were short, you know? I mean, I'm not very tall, and if I would lift my arms supposedly over my head, I could simply... <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, and I don't see any air conditioning units on them either. There were. There were window units. Oh, yeah. Right. Ah, good. Well, saving yeah. grace there. I was going to say, yeah. what were they doing to those poor kids? <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, that that aspect of going for it, just just diving in and, and being a ham, you got to believe that just having a sense of uh, athleticism, kind of know where I'm going with this, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, for, for, for this. Jumping out of a perfectly good plane, Judy, I don't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the same. Uh, I mean, I'm going for it. Yes. I'm doing the trapeze. I'm, uh, it's just that element of you, that sports person. Was that helpful? Did that play a role in your ability to be the, the ham, for lack of a better term? <laughs> I'm only saying that because you used it, Judy. So we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I'm not big on accepting limitations, you know, or if, if there's something I feel that scares me or that I think I can't do or someone says I can't do, um, you know, I, I, I challenge myself continually to, to try to get past points like that, uh, in, in you know, all areas of my life. So, you know, I'm always, when faced with things like that, opportunities, challenges, things, you know, I, I don't like to admit defeat to go oh yeah but i mean there are things that scare me that i'm like i'm not doing like i'm not rock climbing <laughs> i don't I'm know not, you know <laughs> there's there's things that like no no you know as much as i hate to sort of admit to myself that uh, no <laughs> yeah i'm not doing that 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 that, what that scares would that me be? too much now i'm kind of curious but really well i really i'm not a big I, i'm not real comfortable with heights and i know a lot of people then say well yeah but jumping out of airplanes, but I'm not afraid to fly. And if I sit in an airplane and I look out the window, I don't go, oh my goodness, that sense of height doesn't bother me. But you put me on the roof of a building, you know, or the edge of a cliff, it's a whole other thing. So, so heights, so yeah, things like, I mean, I would not go free, free climbing. I would not, I don't know that I'd go rock climbing. Uh, and yet, how different is that from wing walking? I just got to ask. Well, wing walking is, the worst thing about wing walking is the amount of physical pressure on your body um, because you're just 
because of the speed, particularly when you're, I mean, when you just fly and you're standing, you're strapped into a brace, but there's, you can't get out of the wind pressure. The only time you can get out of the wind pressure against your body is when you go into a maneuver and there's those instants where in, like, you, you know, you're, you're looping and you hit a, you hit a, a point where it sort of stalls and you're like, oh gosh, I can breathe for a second. But then you go right into a dive that's like even more pressure. <laughs> so, uh, so that it's grueling, it's physically grueling to do. So it's not something I would want to, that I wanted to do any more than I had to, to this was for Circus of the Stars. And so it was something that they, I had a couple of training sessions because it's not, there's not really a lot to it other than, okay, climb up onto the wing and strap yourself in and then go along for the ride. <laughs> well, the plane. And then maybe oh, climb no. back down. <laughs> That sounds like a lot to me. I'm sorry. It just does. You're supposed to be in the seat, not on the wing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, wow. I mean, at least you can say you did that. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, because of, and these are all things, you know, because of the show. These were all opportunities I had. I know I've, I've been very fortunate to get to do things and go places and meet people and see things because of this tremendous gift I was you know, that I was lucky enough to be a part of, you know, with the Waltons and, and the, yeah, it, it always, that kind of, um, success, it opens a lot of doors. It closes some doors, you know, because you end up with the whole typecasting thing and, right. um, but, you know, and yes, there, you know, there were times where I, you know, I fought against that, or I re I resented it, or whatever. But you know, again, as I said early on, there were there were things that we all went through, but we went through them. So right. you know, those different periods of time, or you know, the points when you suddenly get full of yourself, and <laughs> you know, your ego gets a little out of hand, or you know, you. I mean, those things, yeah, they were part of the growing pains of 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 figuring out what this new life reality was and and you know you learn some tough lessons and you hopefully grow from it and um you know and i feel that that's that's kind of what life is you know i mean it's, it's sort of like succeeding never happens the first time it, it you know you go through how many failures before you succeed so it's that to me it's like that's what life is it's a journey and you're it's not all going to be perfect you know and, and you're going to make mistakes and you know, it's it's sort of for me the trying to learn how to embrace, you know, the positive and move on from the negative. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. You know, it's funny. I'm hearkening back to Michael Learned. She says uh -huh. a lot of the same things that you're saying. Yes. Uh -huh. It's like, well, no wonder they got along so well. No wonder all those people got along so well. You guys were an, indeed a real family. Is just how she described it. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean, we we weren't always just like with real family, you know. We had we we fought, you know. I mean, but not in a not in a mean, vicious way. But you know, my siblings, we you know, we fought, you know, we argued, we you know. But just you still under underneath all that, you knew that you loved each other. So it was safe to for that to happen because it wasn't oh my goodness, if I have an argument with this person, that's going to be it. We're never going to speak again. Oh, no, it was like okay. I'm mad at you, but I love you, yeah. you know, and, and I'm not talking to you right now, but next week I will be, you know, I mean, it was just, that's kind of the way it is. So even we, we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and, you know, our eyes are open to, to that, uh, but we are incredibly protective of each other as well, you know, so you don't hear our cast airing dirty laundry, you know, or sharing scandalous things. I mean, we don't, you know. I mean, there's certainly things that, you know, they could be shared, but we don't because it's like, no, that's not what the show is about. And that ultimately, to me, I don't think that's really what the fans want to know. Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, keep on the high road. That's my motto. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. And, of course, that's what it did. Yeah, and that's that's what my channel's about too. You know, it's like no, I'm not I'm not here to you know talk about 
what was bad about it or, you know, I mean, yeah, there were tough things and there were, but it's like, that's not what it's about. Right. You know, and I just, again, I feel it's that same philosophy of if we could just, if everybody could be kinder to each other. And the same thing, if we could focus more on the positive, because I, I really feel like you bring to life what you put your attention on. You know, it's sort of, if you throughout the day go, oh, it's a horrible day, I'm having a horrible day, I'm like, oh, you know, then that's what's happening. You're creating that because you're expecting it, and so you are feeding into that. Whereas if you kind of, if you look at things from the pot, if you live this sort of glass half full, then you're constantly looking for that, and that's what you're creating. So, you know, I believe that we do create our own reality by what we do moment to moment. So create the reality in a positive way. Yeah, and never stop making the effort, too, because that's into the universe. What goes out comes around. And yeah. may, as well, may as well keep it all on the high road, like we were saying. And um, boy, I just, like I said, when I came across your channel, I was just like, you know, she's got it figured out. Smooth, it's up, it's happy, it's all these great interviews. And yeah, folks, you definitely... Now, that's the, the title of the channel, Judy, is... Behind the scenes, or is it? Yeah, behind the scenes of the Waltons. Yeah, but it's basically my name. If you Google, you know, Judy Norton channel, or you Google behind the scenes of the Waltons, you know, you'll find my channel. It'll there might be some other things that pop up, you know, some copycat wannabes. But (laughs) (laughs) look at her now. (laughs) It'll be pretty evident which one is actually mine. You know. (laughs) Yes, the classy one. That's done very well. That's the one. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Seriously, I love it. So is there anything else you'd like to mention to my listeners as far as promoting something or anything that's coming up? I do know that I I think some of us have just agreed to do an event. I think Eric Scott, Mary McDonough, Kimmy Kotler, Leslie Winston, and I are all going to be in Lincoln, Illinois the weekend of April 22nd and 23rd for like a, you know, a celebrity um, event. Um, So we'll be posting details of that, uh, you know, what the event is and, you know, and a website information. I don't have it yet because it literally just sort of said, yes, we'll go. Um, But that'll be an opportunity for people if they're in that area and they want to come out and say hello and you know, get pictures and autographs and things like that. We will be there for that weekend. And those, usually um, those are things that the cast will post on their Facebook pages. We all have sort of fan pages. Right. And we, you know, that's where I kind of post all the links to my YouTube videos on my public page. Um, So, you know, go to my public page, follow it. You'll get all the, you know, you can go on there at any point to, to find the links to my latest YouTube videos and also where I post any events, anything I'm going to be at. Same thing with Cammie Kotler and Eric Scott, Mary McDonough. You know, we all sort of post, I'm going to be at blah, blah, you know, come out, see us. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's wonderful. That's great. Get out and connect with the fans because you still have plenty, myself included. And so, you know, with that, Judy, I want to thank you for your time today. I'm a bona fide fan of your channel, so you'll see me popping in there. I'm the retro TV radio guy. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, with that, hopefully we'll have you back sometime soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> there you have it. Another retro TV radio podcast episode in the books. Be sure to check out Judy's YouTube series, Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. And while you're there, be sure to like and subscribe to her channel. Also, go to her website, judynorton.com, to keep up on all the exciting things she's working on. You'll find the links to that and her social media community in this episode's description. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast and leave me a positive rating and review. And you can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Golden Rage of TV and on Twitter at Golden Rage of TV One. I'm your host, Pat McCormack, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Radio. Oh,